Let's talk about keyword research. So I have learned a major lesson, disappointingly major lesson over the last few weeks as I've started getting more and more into keyword research where I've discovered that for the lack of spending five minutes with a keyword research tool, I have produced a bunch of content that really isn't relevant in the world, really isn't what people are searching for, really isn't what people really want. So let's talk about what happens if you spend five minutes and then I'm going to show you actually some examples of exactly what I mean. So when you are using a good keyword research tool, you discover that you're creating content that is what people are really searching for which is really vital if you want to get into the search engine rankings, if you want to get your YouTube videos ranked, if you want traffic, if you want people to pay attention to what you create, it helps to create content using the terms that people are actually searching for. Secondly, it allows you to focus your message on what people want. People tend to search for what they want answers to. Using a good tool tells you what those things are. It prevents costly mistakes. You go create content and you're using the wrong terms. In some cases, like for example, a video, the only way to fix that is to recreate that video. So you have to start all the way over to be able to do that. Plus, a good research tool gives you ideas on other things that you can create to make your content even more relevant, to create even more content that is relevant and to better serve your audience. So I'm going to show you three tools that you can use to do exactly this. And I'm going to do a quick demo so you can see what I mean. So the first one is SEMrush. You can get it at doncrowther.com slash get SEMrush. And I'll just tell you, hey, I'm going to show you some affiliate links today. That's okay. This is the tool that I recommend whether or not you are, whether you go through my affiliate rank, my affiliate page or not. All right. So let's do this. Let's go to the screen capture and show you this. So here I am in SEMrush. And I'm going to put in a term up here. I'm going to put in opt, opt in page, which by the way, it won't make a difference whether there's a hyphen in there or not. Notice that this is saying that the term opt in page gets 320 searches during the month, 471 different searches for the various iterations of that particular tool. And I can drill down and I can see by clicking over here under the keyword magic tool, I can drill down further and I can start seeing things like the competitiveness, the cost per click, those kinds of elements all, all get reflected here. And so it's much more valuable. Okay. So remember that 320 for opt-in page. All right. Here's another way that people will search for this. They'll put in squeeze page. All right. So let's see what squeeze page gets. Squeeze page gets a thousand. Oh, so just by calling it a squeeze page, as opposed to an opt-in page, I potentially double the amount of traffic that that particular piece of content would get exposed to. That makes sense? More than double the number of people are searching for squeeze page versus opt-in page. So just by calling it a squeeze page instead of an opt-in page, I just doubled the potential traffic that came, that came to that. I hope you're seeing my point here. One word different, well, hyphenated word different, makes all that difference. Now let's look at one more thing. What if we look at landing page? Now you and I both know that a landing page can be anything you want to send traffic to. It can be an opt-in page. It can be a webinar sign-up page. It can be a sales page. It can be all kinds of different things. But do our, do our customers understand that? 
All right, so landing page. 22,000. Oh, so that content that I just created about opt-in page, which literally I worked on a couple of hours yesterday, actually is a fraction of what I could be getting. So if you look at it, opt-in page got 320 searches, squeeze page got 1,000, landing page got 22,000. Which one do you think you should be creating content around? Again, it's the exact same content. You're just calling it a different thing. Back to this. Let's look at this. Online marketing. 9,900 searches a month. All keywords, 50,000. Okay. Next, let's look at internet marketing. Again, the exact same content. You're just calling it, oh, it's only 8,100. It's actually less. And all the keywords gets 18,000. Now let's put in this. Digital marketing. 60,500, 119,000 all, all keywords. Total volume, million searches. So once again, here's another example. Just by using a different word, you significantly increase the quantity of people that you can reach. Now, I realize that the SEO purists out there are saying, yes, but one is less competitive than the other. I totally understand that. But doesn't it make sense to be talking about things in a way that people are actually searching for them? So let's do this real quick. Let's turn to another tool because many of us are creating videos. So there is a tool called VidIQ. And here I've got, see, any of these little triangle boxes are VidIQ pages. So if I come down here, I've, I've installed VidIQ. I've attached it to my YouTube channel. And now I'm going in and I'm going to click on keyword inspector. So I'm going to put in opt in page comma. I'm going to put in squeeze page comma and landing page. And as you can guess, it's going to give us similar kinds of results. So on YouTube, Search volume was 946. Notice this for just a second. I want to point something out. Opt-in page is searched for on, on Google 320 times. On YouTube, it's searched 946. Three times as many searches on Google on YouTube as it is on Google. And I just realized I wasn't showing you the right page. So let me show you the right page. So once again, this is Keyword Inspector. I just put in, I went in and I typed in the three and here's the results. So opt-in page 946, squeeze page three, 3,120. Landing page 281,000. Now remember that number for just a minute. 281,000 searches done on YouTube during the month. Now let's go back to Google and remember that on Google, it was searched 22,000 times. So back to YouTube, YouTube was searched on 281,000. So more than 10 times the searches are being done on YouTube than on Google for that particular term. Now, you're not going to find this all the time, but notice what just happened. Just by doing a video as opposed to a written piece of content, and by the way, I'd recommend you do both, I just potentially increased my exposure by 10 times. Landing page, 22,000. Landing page on YouTube, 281,000. It doesn't take a math genius to recognize you probably ought to be, if you're going to talk about pages that people go to to opt in, 
you probably ought to use the term landing page and you probably ought to make sure that you put something up on on YouTube for that. And notice this also. So here's the other thing that I haven't talked about that we will talk about in the future, which is competition. These factors, anytime you're getting a competition that's very low and a lot of quantity in terms of search volume, what that does is it combines to this overall score, which weights the two of them against each other and tells you, hey, this is a pretty good thing to do content about. 75 out of 100, that's a really good score. You've got high con, you've got high searches and very low competitiveness. So squeeze page, lower, but also lower. And so you, any one of these three is a good topic to do things about. So that was... That was vidIQ, so doncrowther.com slash getvidIQ, and we'll talk more about this tool in the future. So I've showed you two. I've shown you SEMrush, which tells you what the searches are on the search engines. Then I've shown you vidIQ, which shows you what the searches for are on YouTube, both of them are giving you very similar results between between the two. And actually, let's do this. Let's put in, let's do our marketing one. Okay, so online marketing, internet, marketing, and digital marketing. Let's see what our results are. Oh, isn't that interesting? So let me get my correct card. And so... Digital marketing, remember, I'll go back to this. So let's just look at digital marketing. Remember, it got 60,500 searches on Google. Now we'll go back to YouTube and we'll discover that on YouTube, it got 1.2 million. So that's 20 times if I didn't, if I didn't blow my, my uh, decimal point again significantly higher searches being done for these marketing terms on YouTube than are being done on Google. Now, also notice it's not just these three things that we get. We also get all these other ideas of things that we could consider creating content about. So digital marketing tutorial course for beginners. What is digital marketing? Digital marketing tutorial for beginners. I'll just scroll down. Actually, let's do this. Let's sort on overall score, which means it's giving us things that are the, uh, you've got the highest chance of ranking. Uh, I'm going to skip down some of these names. Marketing analytics, interesting. 75 out of 100, 44,000 searches. Growth marketing, video marketing, interesting. Interesting, 80,000 searches, 74 score. So can you see how by using a tool like this, you are immediately pointed to content ideas that you can create content around that will then potentially bring in significantly higher traffic to you. So this is important that you understand this. Can you see how if you would just go spend five minutes before you create a piece of content, before you go live, before you turn on a recorder, before you sit down and start writing, if you'll just spend five minutes and do some basic searches like I've just shown you, that you can generate significantly better results for the work you're putting into that content. That's the core. Now, by the way, let's do this just in case people are saying, but, but, but Don, I need a free tool. Okay, so let's show you a free tool. This is Google Trends, trends.google.com. So let's go ahead and put in our, we're going to get a similar numbers. So we'll put in opt-in page, squeeze page, landing page. But this is going to give us not only comparative between the three, but it'll also give us trend lines. 
And so we can see that here's digital. So the yellow is landing page. The red is squeeze page. And the blue, you can hardly see it, is opt-in page. So blue is hardly even registering. Uh, yellow it is there since 2020. It's gone down to by about, I'd say, gone down about 40% in here, which I don't quite understand. I'd have to do some research into that. But if you hold your your uh, cur your mouse over it, you can see squeeze page gets a ranking of one versus 73 for landing page. That's how much more traffic is coming to landing page versus that. And then you can go see what areas of the country. Uh, you can also, if, if this is looking at it in the United States, we can start seeing interest by subregion. We can see other ideas, related queries and things like that. So this is a free tool that you can also use. But Notice this, I get a small amount of additional information out of the free tool. When I come over here, I'm getting all kinds of information that can significantly help me. I've seen my, my competitiveness, my cost, uh, trend lines. I'm seeing all kinds of other ideas. I go back to the, to the vidIQ. I've got all these ideas. This is one of those things where, you know what? You may actually want to pay a little money to be able to get to some information that is truly useful to help you in your work that you're doing in creating content. All right, I hope that was helpful. So let me just show you real quick back to the two places, the, the two tools that I'm recommending today. Uh, so vidIQ, doncrowler.com slash vidIQ. And I can't find the right card, but it's doncrowler.com slash SEMrush, get SEMrush. And those two tools will help you to get what you're after. And it should help you considerably. So I just regret that even though I use these tools all the time, I wasn't going in and doing the five minutes before I came in and doing these, these recordings. And I've got a whole bunch of content that's about terms that I wish I would have done it just slightly different now. Has this been helpful? Can you see how using this will help you and your business? What's your favorite tool? Whatever your tool is, and there's a bunch of them. I encourage you to use one of them. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.